The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22. Chapter 22. We will uh, study chapter 22 and get some thoughts and lessons and principles on chapter 22. Okay? We are we are trying to finish the book of Deuteronomy uh, sa ating mga Sunday school lesson for the past weeks. And uh, Deuteronomy is the completion of the Torah, the last of the five books of Moses. Kung sa Leviticus at sa Exodus, makikita natin yung mga batas na ibinigay ng Panginoon sa kanyang bayan, mas lalo po itong nakompleto sa Deuteronomy. Kaya siya tinawag na Deuteronomy, the second law. Okay? The other law. Or, as we know, the completion of the law. Dito po natapos ang Pentateuch, the law of Moses, ano ho, at uh, uh, idealin yung panghigit ng uh, writer kung ano yung mga kailangan nila na mga batas para magkaroon ng law and order and of course, preservation sa bansang Israel. Okay? Kaya for the past weeks, ano, marami tayong mga napag-aralan. Nung last week, napag-aralan natin yung mga feasts na dapat nilang i-celebrate. Napag-aralan natin yung mga past, past week, yung attitude na meron dapat sila. Ano nga yung parang pinaka-keyword natin na habilin ni Moses sa mga tao sa Deuteronomy? Remember. They have to remember what God has done for their life, for their nation, from who they were, from where they came from, and what they have become uh, in their history. They became a nation mighty, and, and, and they, they became a nation with freedom. They became a people, and, and they, they, they have their own lands and to, uh, uh, to enjoy the goodness of the Lord. And the, the, the Bible tells us that the, the Lord, the through Moses, would always tell them, you cannot forget that it is all God's mercy and grace. Okay? Kaya kailangan, kaya lahat ng kanilang offerings, lahat ng kanilang dapat gawin, it is to humble them always para laging pababae ng kanilang puso, lagi silang nakatapak sa, ano, sa ground. Ibig sabihin, lagi silang maging humble people of God. Okay? So, chapter 22 is a continuation of the second part of the book of Deuteronomy. The first part was the opening remarks. The opening remarks include the Shema prayer, Shema Israel, the prayer for Israel, be a uh, uh, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Okay? And then the second part is where we can see the certain laws of the land that Moses uh, are giving them. And let's start on chapter 22. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt in any case bring them again unto thy brother. Para hindi rin kayo manito, the Lord summarized all of these commandments into two. To love God above all and to love others as yourself. Okay po? Kaya anytime you would see these laws, you would, you would see God's reason on giving these specific things on their specific time of history. We might not uh, understand much. Kasi hindi naman tayo nabuhay doon sa kultura at panahon nila. Isa mga, isang punto namin doon sa tinatawag na problem text subject natin sa Bible College, bakit may mga hindi maintindihan sa Bible? Kasi ang sabi doon sa, sa, sa answer, because we are separated from Bible events for thousands of years and vast cultural and linguistic differences. Are you with me? If you were about to read a book from Bicol, maybe 60 years ago already, so, somehow, magkakaroon ka ng problema pag hindi ka bikulano, hindi mo maiintindihan. Okay po? Tapos yung taon pa na nasulat ito. How much more with a book that has been written for 2,000 or 3,000 years ago from the Israelites with cultures that we do not know and comes from that we do not understand. Kaya kung minsan din natin maintindihan. Pero yun nga, kagaya nung napapanood natin nung nakaraan sa introduction, pero pag kinumpere mo yung mga batas na to, doon sa mga batas ng mga kasabay nila sa history, 
Kagaya ng uh, Code of Hammurabi, yung mga natuklasan ng mga codes, yung mga batas ng mga ibang bayan ng Assyria, makikita natin na very civilized, very moral, ang batas ng Israel. Kasi batas po ito ng Diyos. Pati nga ho sa sanitation nila, sila lang mo ang malinis. Alam niyo ho ba na meron tayong mga civilization na hindi naman matagal? 1900 lang. Pero ka, 1950s lang. Pero madumi. I mean, yung bakterya ng pagkain ng dudod, tapos yung uh, sanitation, madumi. Walang naguhugas. Alam niyo po, panahon pa lang po ng Deuteronomy, pati po paghuhugas ng kamay, mababasa natin dito. Seven times dapat running water at iba pang mga bagay. So they were so advanced during their time. Okay? Now, on chapter 22, you can find this principle of loving your brethren. Pag nakita mo ro yung alaga ng kapatid mo, sabi ng kapwa mo, okay, kung na naniligaw, magtago. Ihatid mo. Okay? And if thy brother be not nigh unto thee, or if thou, now, thou know him not, then thou shalt bring it unto thine own house, and it shall be with thee until thy brother seek after it, and thou shalt restore it to him again. No. Itatago mo sa'yo, hindi para itago mo talaga. Kundi para pag nandiyan na yung naghahanap, ibabalik mo. Okay po? Hello? In like manner shall thou do with his ass, and so shall thou do with his raiment, and with all lost thing of thy brothers, which she hath lost, and thou hast found, shall thou do likewise, thou mayest not hide thyself. Kung may nakita kang damit niya, alaga niya, kabayo, o asno, ibabalik mo. Pag nakakita ka daw ng cellphone, huwag mong tanggalin yung SIM card, tapos i-erase mo yung data. Ha? O dalhin mo sa gumagawa at ipadilip mo. Hindi. Hanapin mo yung may-ari. Tignan mo yung kolay. Hindi mo grabe. Blessing. Ang tagal ko nang pinag-pray to. May cellphone na ako. Ang ganda. Tapos may mga numbers. Tuwa tao pa yung may-ari. Diba? If you, if, 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 if you were to discover a phone or whatever it is or money, check first if there is an owner. Okay po? Ingat ka lang, if you, to, if you were about to get some money outside, you know, you found a, a lost money, ingat ka lang, sino na wala? Tiyan na, amen. Don't ask who owns it, everybody will say it's theirs. Okay? So be careful as well. Wag mo naman ang kinin. Okay po? Ngayon, kung talaga wala na talaga may ari, ang blessing na yan sa'yo. Kung talaga wala na naghahanap, o oh, mga itbon na yan na nasa ito, okay? Pero yung ilang buwan na, if you have a cell phone, di ba, nakita mo. A ako, I, I have experienced that, I think, twice. Twice akong nakapulot ng cell phone, tapos mag-price naman ako ng pala. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kasi malilimutin ako eh. But, 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 but two times, I think, one time or two times, I, I still remember once when I was a Bible college student, somebody left his phone on the, uh, inside the jeepney. Eh! Ano pa lang naman, 3210. 3210 yan ang pulot ko. Hinanap ko talaga yung mayari, hanapin mo. Oo, pero before, when, before I became a Bible student, I didn't know that. All I dream is to get a phone and then put away the SIM card and then own the phone for myself and take it as a blessing. Okay, ho? So that's not what God wants us to do. If you see something that it is not yours, you take care of it until you give it back to the right person full owner. Work to the owner. Okay? And then verse 4. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ass or his ox fall down by the way, and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt surely help him to lift them up again. Even taking care of others' property. Diba? Sometimes, of course, we might not, uh, we cannot uh, specifically apply it in our days. Baka mamaya, mapagamala ka pa magnanaka. But, you have to see the principle on, on, on these laws that you can see what kind of character and heart would God wants His people to have. Anong klase ng puso? Ano? May puso ng kotisiya. Are you with me then? Are you with me? Kaya sabi ng Bible, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. You've got to uh, you've got to 
consider others as well. Diba? If you see his animal fall down, you think, masinisipan nyo pa. Nakita nyo yung alaga ng kapitbahay yung pusa. Batuhin nyo kasi makulit. Diba? O, o, baka mamaya patayin nyo pa. O, yung mga ganun, ayaw na, just you have to always consider other people. Okay? You have to consider other people. Paul, and see if you if you can help them. Okay, po. Hello. So, sana ganon din tayo. Pati yung po sa mga kaya eh, nasa siya, di ba? Ikuflash mo muna, bago ka alis. Courtesy ba? Okay, po. Courtesy to others. Okay? Wow, selfish ang anak ng Diyos. Okay, po ba yun? Hello. Amen. Oh, verse 5. Are you there? Amen. Ready, read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, there is a very uh, a long time debate concerning pants on women. Hindi mo natin pag-aaralan yan. Because some see women's pants as women's clothing. Okay, kung hindi mo naman pwede ipasukot yung pantalon ng babae sa lalaki. Diba? And there are, there are professions that you cannot wear if you're a lifeguard or what, you cannot wear skirts. Okay? Then you will swim. Hindi parang bigla na may batyan, ano? So, yung mga ganun bagay, ang gusto ko lang yung point sa inyo dito, the principle of chapter uh, uh, 22 verse 5 is the principle on uh, uh, sodomy. Ano ho? Na, the principle against sodomy or sodomites. Ayaw ng Diyos ng uh, ng uh, lahi na kagaya doon po sa Sodom at Gomorrah. Kaya ang 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 ang, ang, ang pinapatukuyan ng Panginoon na abomination dito mo ay eh yung homosexuality. Okay po? We have to save our children and ourselves from this danger of homosexuality, yung LGBTQ. I don't know the exact number right now, but I believe it's more than 20 genders. Ano po? LGBTQ community believes in 20 plus genders. And I don't even uh, know uh, more than four, I think. Kung sinabi nila na transgender, sabihin talagang babae ka, nakatago ka sa katawan ng lalaki. And then you, you, you bring, brought back your body into a lady, kaya ka nag-transform, yung mga ganang mga bagay. Pero sa Bible, isa lang po yan. So do me. Alam niyo po yung so do me? Sobrang madumi. So do me. God hates it. Okay? Hindi po, it, it doesn't mean that you're a man, you're, you're parang brusco and you're a lady, dapat mahinihin ka. Hindi. May mga babae na kahit na nagang mamakit ng puno at, at kaya kang bugbugin. Diba? At may mga lalaki naman na hindi mahinig susuntukan at uh, mahinaho. Hindi po yun ang kinagagalitan ng Diyos. Kundi yung lalaki ka, magkakaroon ka ng attraction sa kapwa mo lalaki at babae ka, ganun din. Okay po? Ganito ang Diyos sa kabanglaan at sa katumboy. Yan, hindi po yan pang kristyano. Kaya hanggang sa pananamit, sinasagip sina ng Panginoon. Okay po? Hindi pwedeng susuotin ni babae yung para sa lalaki at ganun din naman yung lalaki para sa babae. Okay po? Naalala ko nung Noong mga panahon po namin na wala pa ako sa church at sa Bible school, ano ba ang minsan gusto namin magsuotin ng mga babae? Oo, mga pantalo ng mga babae. Okay? Kasi medyo mas hapit yun eh. Noong mga panahon na wala pa mga straight cut noong araw eh. Eh mas hapit yung pantalo ng babae. Yun ang mga sinusot ng mga lalaki gusto mong pupuporma. At iba pa mga bagay. Pero ang iniiwasan talaga dito at ang ayaw ng Diyos mangyari, ay makorap ang kultura at pagkatao ng mga Israelita. Okay po? Ayaw ng Diyos yan. Matumi mo, mga kapatid. They have all their reasonings. Ano sabi nila? It, it is inward. Even science will never tell you that homosexuality is by birth. It's just a theory. Okay po? What even science tells us, wala naman tayo masyado scientific uh, evidence na dala-dala ngayon, but you can search it out, na there is, there is a study uh, on twins, may mga pag-aaral patungkol sa kambal. 
na kung ang kung ang kung ang homosexuality is by birth, dapat walang kambal na lalaki at babae na sabay. Okay po. Dapat uh, parehas yun. Pero hindi ko alam at hindi ko alam paano. I cannot explain it to you. You can search it out. But this scientific study shows that homosexuality is not by birth. It's really a gender dysphoria. Ano, ito po ay talagang uh, uh, problema sa uh, 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 pagunawa ng tao patungkol sa kanyang kasarian. Okay po? So yun po ay malinaw naman sa Biblia. Kung ikaw ay lalaki, ginawa ka ng Diyos sa lalaki. Kung ikaw ay babae, ginawa ka ng Diyos sa babae. Now, there are certain abnormalities physically, ano ho? pero yun po ay physical. Ano ho? Pero naalam ng tao kung anong pagkagawa sa kanya ng Diyos. Okay? Hello? At alam niyo po medyo malala. It, it goes wilder and wilder and wilder as time goes by. Alam naman natin, even sa Canada, di ba? Yung sinabi ng missionary natin dito, when you have a newborn child, you don't put their gender on their birth certificate. They have to choose their gender when they are at the right age. Oh, mga ganun po eh. Malinaw po yan. Ano, kung gusto niyo na lalo pa kung makapakinig ng detalyadong pagpapaliwanag ng siyensya at ng Biblia at ng katotohanan, patukol ho dyan, eh, pwede ho nating uh, i-post yan sa ating pong group. Ano ho. I, I remember I was watching Mr. Ben Shapiro. Pinapaliwanag yan ni Ben Shapiro sa kanyang mga talks. Isa ho itong hudyo na nag-aral at may kaalaman patungkol po sa pagkalaso ng isip ng tao kasi mo dito, okay, sa Amerika malala. Alala niyo sa Amerika yung nakulong dahil sa nagpagawa sa kanya ng cake, yung same-sex couple, hindi niya ginawa kasi Christian siya. He said it goes against my conviction and I will not. Ano nangyari dun sa gumagawa ng cake? Pinakulong. Okay po? Pinersecure. Awa ng Diyos, nanalo siya sa Supreme Court. Okay po? Pero, sa mundo, maraming usapan pa at paliwanagan. Sa Biblia, malinaw po ang sinabi ng Panginoon. Dalawa lang po ang gender ng tao. Lalaki at babae. Okay, so let's continue on reading. If a bird's test chance to be before the in the way, in any tree, or on the ground, whether they be young ones or eggs, and the dam sitting upon the young, ito yung inahin, For upon the eggs thou shalt not take the dam with the young, but thou shalt in any wise let the dam go and take the young to thee, that it may be well with thee, that thou mayest prolong thy days. When thou buildest a new house, at sa mga manok po yan, ano ho, When thou buildest a new house, then thou shalt make a battlement for thy roof, that thou bring not blood upon thine house, if any man fall from this. So pati po yung pagkukonstruction. Tinuro na rin ho dito, dapat mayroong safety equipment. Ano ho, para hindi ka magiging dahilan ng kamatay ng iba. Verse 9. So it's all about taking care of others. Uh, thinking about your neighbor. Loving your neighbor as yourself. Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with diverse seeds, lest the fruit of thy seed, which thou hast sown in the fruit of thy vineyard, be defiled. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. We know the New Testament principle behind this verse. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Yan po yung ibig sabihin mo. Pag dalawang mag-ibang hayop ang inilagay mo sa pang-araw, hindi siya pantay. It won't be uh, balanced. At, at naku, there, listen, there, these verses might be the practical laws in their time. And yet, because the Bible is God-breathed, there are certain verses in this Old Testament law that also pertains to New Testament principles that the church should apply. Okay? Do you remember last time yung pinag-aralan po natin kay Apostle Paul? Tingnan nyo, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Balikan po natin. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 Verse number 
Ano ang sabi ng Bible? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treaded out the corn. Then God take care for oxen? Or saith ye it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt. This is written, that he that treasures in hope should partakers of his hope. So you see, the verse, the exact verse is Deuteronomy 25 verse. 25 verse. When these things were written, it was indeed a timely practical law during the time of the Israelites in Deuteronomy. And listen to this. But what made it possible that this verse would still be written in the Bible even until our generation? Kaya nakasulat yan. Marami namang kasulatan, wala na sa atin eh. Pero kung bakit hanggang ngayon, may Bible tayo at nakikita yung verse na yan, kasi hindi lang gusto ng Diyos na alagaan yung pag-aaral o yung panahon nila at pagkain ng hayo. Kundi may mga prinsipyong ipinapakita ang Diyos sa mga bagong tipan at sa, sa mga mananampalataya ng bagong tipan para may apply. So nag-get siya po. The Old Testament Scriptures has principles for the New Testament believers to live by. And it's about our obedience to the law of God. Kaya nga patungkol daw yun sa giving. So, ganun din naman po dito, makikita natin yan sa 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Ano ho? Do not be equally yung together with unbelievers. Signal nga natin yan. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Ready? Go. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness and unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Now, this is a this is a verse that not just pertains to uh, husband and wife relationship. It could also be applied to partnership in business and other things. Now, it, 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 ang ibig lang mong sabihin dito, huwag kang makipa, makisama. Huwag kang maki, makipagkasundo sa kalukohan at kasalanan. Are you with me? And of course, this principle also apply in marriage. May alam nga naman, it would be hard. Of course, there are principles after marriage na pag napangasawa mo, unbeliever. May prinsipyo pa rin ang Biblia na pwede mong ibuhay. There are still principles in the Bible that you can live by. And so, you can still serve the Lord. That may mga bagay na lang na mawawala. Kaya ngayon, sa mga dalaga, binata, yun na yung pag-pre-pray ninyo. Okay mo? Na, huwag na, lalo na ho, hindi, ang ibig sabihin, hindi lang admiration ang paihihalin. Hindi lang dahil gusto mo siya. Hindi iisipin mo, ligtas mo itong tao ito. Makakasama ka siya habang buhay. Magtitiwala ba siya sa Diyos na pinagkakatiwalaan ko? Hindi po ba? At yung mga ibang bagay, alam ka na yan, kahit naman pa ulit-ulitin eh, yung mga talagang gusto sa admiration, makukulit ko rin. Okay? Pero paalala lamang po. Okay po? Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. God wants His children to be separated from the world. The principle also with this is, ito pa yung mga kasunod na talata, verse 11. Thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse sort, as of woolen and linen together. O po sir, ang ibig sabihin, magkakaibang tela, hindi pwede. Hindi. Kaya nga po yung prinsipyo niya, hindi man, we might not understand why. Okay? But it has something to do with separation. Thou shalt not seize a kid on his mother's meal. Ang mong pakukuluan yung anak na puping doon sa nanay niya. These things, we might not understand the very reason. And yet, studying the context of the whole book, you find that God, through these laws, wants a separation. God wants His people to be separated from the world. Separated from darkness and separated from lustful living. The Canaanite people during those times are terrible. They were a perverted people. Their worship and religion is connected to sex and murders. Okay, ho? They murder babies. Kung noon, Kung ngayon, abortion, no panahon ni Momo, they offer their kids to the fire. They kill these babies. Okay, are you with me now? So, same principle today. You have to be separated. 
Do not, do not live under the principles of the world. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, are you with me? Is in the law of the Lord. It is not for believers of the Lord Jesus Christ to support abortion. Are you with me? It is not for the people of the Lord Jesus Christ to support liberalism. It is not for the people of the Lord Jesus Christ na mabuhay kontra sa mga malilinaw na batas ng Biblia. Okay po? Do you know that there are churches right now that accept the LGBTQ people to their ministries? Okay po? And I don't believe it's the church of the Lord. But for us, as for me and my house and our church, we will serve the Lord. We will be separated. Kailangan po makikayahu. Hanggang ngayon, simula noon, ipinapangaral sa likuran ng pulpitong ito na hindi para sa anak ng Diyos ang maglaseng. Okay po? Pero maraming mana ng palate, there are still believers of Christ who are living such lifestyles. Okay po? Pastor, kasi ang boring naman eh. Hindi boring yun. Masarap nga yung ganun buhay. Wala kang gastos. Pero ang pinakarason, kung bakit hindi mo gagawin yan kasi ito ay binago na ng Diyos na. May mga bisita po tayo, hindi naman po ibig sabihin na hindi ka tao pag bumabawa ka ng mga ganun bagay. Hindi po. May mga bagay tayo na nakasanayan na kung titignan natin sa Biblia ay hindi pala maganda para sa akin yan. May mas maganda pa ng plano ang Diyos sa akin. Okay mo? Kung pipiliin ko pala ang Diyos, kaya niya pala akong tulungan na tanggalin ang mga bagay na meron ako na hindi tama. Okay po? Are you with me? There are many things that I do in my life before that are too worldly. Masyadong makamundo. I decided to follow the Lord. Then it changed everything. Pananamit, panitigarilyo, paglalasing, pagbabarakada, yung mga pakikisama. Iba yung nakisama at saka nakisama. Okay po? So, we have to see the principles in the second part of Deuteronomy 22 is God wants a separated people. A people distinct from others. Among all the groups of people inside the land of Cana, Israel is known because of their obedience to the laws of God. They become different. They dress differently. They talk differently. They live life differently. They treat others differently. And it's all moral and pure. Dahil po yun ang utos ng Diyos sa kanila. Verse 12, Thou shalt make thee princes upon the four quarters of thy vesture, wherewith thou coverest thyself. O, nakita nyo? Are you with me? What's the purpose of vesture? That thou coverest thyself. Kaya ka nagdadamit kasi i-cover mo yung sarili mo. There are certain parts of your body that should be covered. I cannot see a verse in the Bible that God wants us to cover everything. Yung mata na lang ang kita. Diba? Pero para siya daw kaya ganun. Pero kayo mga babae at kayo rin mga lalaki, kaya ginawa ng Diyos ang damit para may tatakpan tayo. Are you with me? Hello? And most especially, the parts that, that, that these are, uh, the parts that provoke a uh, temptation to the opposite sex. Okay? Kung kayo po ay babae, ano ho, tama lang po talaga, natatakpan nyo po yung mga dapat po ninyong tatakpan. Okay? Ito po, leeg. Ito po sa baba ng leeg, the collar bone. O, oh, ba? Sa baba po ng collar bone, ano po tawag? Dibdib. O, oh, kaya pag nakalabas yan, nabas ang dibdib. Okay po? 
Kaya tatakpan po yan. Huwag kayong maniwala sa mundo. Kasi nanonood ako natin yan yun sa mga passion packet. Hindi pag medyo hindi ganun pa ano, yung ibababa mo ng konti. Di ba? Huwag kayong maniwala sa mundo. Maganda ko kayo. Ang kagandahan ng babae, hindi nakikita sa kung anong ipapakita niya. Okay ho? At, 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 at sabi nga ng bahay ko, ang kagandahan dapat ng babae is a meek and quiet spirit. Maniwala ko kayo. Alam ng mga tatay yan. Kahit pakamukha pa yan na kung sino pa mong artista. Pag yan ay nagbubunganga na, wala na ang pangit na. Talagang hindi na talaga magbunga. Ang meek and quiet spirit sobrang admirable. Are you with me? Hello? Of a meek and quiet spirit, sabi ng Bible. So that's your beauty. Pero hindi naman masama na magpaganda. Hindi naman masama na lagay niyo ng bunga noon naman yung mga mukha ninyo para hindi masira ng araw. Ano naman yung parang rainbow na yung mukha ninyo? O kaya yung parang ano na talaga, nakapalitada na ng kapal-kapal. Lahatan niyo naman, naawag naman na. Di ba? Hello? 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 Oh. Pero ang pinawag na sinasabi ko sa inyo dito, yung covering. Yung principle dito, sabi niya, divesture wherewith thou coverest thyself. Imbis mo nahihirapan kang magbaba, magtakip na magtakip, ba't hindi ka pumili ng mas mahaba? Mas tuloy kasi, wala nang mabili. Totoo po yan, naiintindihan ka po natin ang mga kababayan natin eh. Kasi minsan, sometimes it's hard to find modest apparel in the halls. Ba, nangyong ko sinasya sa inyo? Do not forget that they are still alive. Sino sila? Mga mananahe. Buhay pa sila. Hindi po lahat ng mananahe na COVID. You can go to alteration, alter stations. Eh, pastor, ang mahal din sa me. It's good when you spend for the glory of God. Di ba? So, ipatahin ninyo. Huwag yung mga nakalabas ang mga kilikili ninyo o yung mga dibdib ninyo, kasi yan dapat tinatakpan yan ng mana ng palataya. Kasi ang pananamin ay ginawa ng Panginoon para pantakit. Hello? O, oh, pati lalaki, yun ba? Mga babae, nagtatalit na maayos yung mga lalaki, yung kapag po sa Facebook. Mga nakahubad pa. May ubahit na yung dadamit ho tayo. Hindi ho tayo. D dapat ho nagdadamit tayo ng maayo. Ayan. Para ho nakakover din ang ating mga sarili. If any man take a wife and go in and to her and hate her and give occasion of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say it of this woman, when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Then said the father of the damsel and the mother take and took her of the damsel's virginity. Katibayan ba na siya'y naging dalaga talaga at wala pa nangyayari sa kanya? And to the others of the city, sabi ko, to make the long story short, may mga asawa daw kasi na dahil ayaw nila yung napangasawa nila, gagawa ng naglan. Kasi noong pong panahon nila, it was a law. That, that you have to be virgin before marriage. And of course, if you're a child of God, you have to. Okay po? Pero, hindi po natin, ang uh, tawag nito, hindi po natin sinasadya dahil nabuhay tayo sa mga maling kultura at nakakilala tayo sa Panginoon ng Lay. Okay po? So it's not under the law. Hindi ho sa batas yan na eh, iiwanan mo yung asawa mo kasi kung napang-asawa mo siya, hindi po. But during that time, it was a law that you have to be separated uh, to that person because that person committed a life sentence crime. Noong panahon po na yun. Okay po? Halimbawa, nakapang-asawa ka. Eh, siyempre, hindi pa naman saved dati. Wala hindi pa kakakilala sa Panginoon. At pagkatapos, nalaman mo ganun. Hindi pwede hiwala yan yan. Hindi, sabi ng Deuteronomy, hindi po ganun. Okay po? Pero, ang pinupoy dito, are you with me now? If you will marry somebody, hindi mo yan parang, yung kasabihan natin na parang kaling mainit na pag napasok ka, bibitawan mo. Ay, ayaw mo na yan. Ganyan pa na yan. Hello? Lakas pa ng humilik. Di ba ba? And it's happening right now in different parts of the globe. Kahit paghilig, ayaw na, iiwan na yan na kinabukasan. That's not marriage. Marriage is a commitment for a lifetime. Are you with me? Hello? 
O so hindi po rin ayaw mo na. At lalo naman, gano'n naman po eh, ba? For couples, you will feel that most of the time. When you have a quarrel and a fight with your spouse, you want to be immediately separated. Hello? But you don't do it. Because that is a lifetime commitment. Kahit pa yung bad break. At kung ano-ano ba, once you sign that contract and vow them to God and His people that you will be together for a lifetime, you have to be together for a lifetime. Are you with me? Eh, kasi wala nang pag-asa. Hindi totoo yan. The reason why there is no hope because there is no hope in you. If you will obey the Lord, marriage can still be saved. If the wife will only submit, or the husband would only love his wife as Christ not the church, then the marriage can last for a lifetime. Kaya tayong mga mana ng palataya ng Panginoon, especially sa mga may asawa na po. Kayo naman mga pinata, kung gusto nyo i-honor ng Panginoon yung relationship nyo, mag-asawa na kayo. Ngayon kung grade 6 pa lang, paano na kayo makakapag-asawa? Di ba? I mean, you, you, you've got to be at the right age and then kaya mo na magpapasan ka para maging kagalang-galang sa Panginoon ng relasyon. Are you with me? But listen, if you are a husband in a wife, the principle of verses 13 up to some of the parts before we end, at the adult end na iba dun, you've got to love your spouse the rest of your life. Are you with me? Hello? Hindi po pwede sa atin yung nainis ka nang iiwanan mo na. Nagmukha lang mga kukula mo, nagmukha lang halimaw yung asawa mo, e bitawan mo. Okay? Hello? Hello? Next. Verse number 22. If a man be found lying with a woman, married to an husband, then they shall both of them die. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so shall the put away evil from Israel. Pag nakita ninyo na may adulterous acts, that is death penalty. God hates adultery. Galit ang Diyos sa pangalan niya. But adulterers and homemongers, God will judge. That, as a married man, should I always think the rest of my life. God hates adultery. Are you with me? If you're a married woman, God hates adultery. This terrible sin has crept in churches and ministers and pastors and preachers and everybody, every married couple in Christian dog, sa Christianity. Marami na mo yung nawasak na tahanan. Marami na mo yung matang pinaluha. Tukso yun eh. Oo, oh, nasa, ayan. So yun ang dapat itatapon natin. Ha? Hello? One of the very reasons for adultery is pornography. Okay. Kaya if you're married and even if you're single, you've got to put it away. Itatapon mo yan. Kasi sisirain niya ng pangunawa mo. Uutuin ka. Gagawin parang totoo yung hindi naman totoo. Mga lalaki. Okay. At pati mga babae. Okay po, itatapon po natin yan. Hindi po para yan sa mana ng panataya ni Kristo. At napakadali ngayon. Kahit ka Facebook lang. Are you with me? Kahit TikTok challenge lang eh. Ano? Hindi naman ang lahat ng TikTok challenge ha. Pero may mga TikTok challenge na mga malalaswa. Okay ho? At yung makikita niyo ho yan sa, sa inyong mga cellphone. Oh. Yung mga bagay na yan, ina-attract ka sa isang bagay na hindi totoo. Hello? 
Kung nag-make up yan, mga edited yan, at kung oh, tatanggalin ang ang tamang pananaw mo sa iyong asawa. Kaya yun ang buburangin natin. Tama po ba? Kasi wawa sa akin ito, pati ang ating mga anak. Okay po? Hello? Oh, paano natin malalabanan yan? Pag-decision ka na. You've got to decide. Stop it. Okay, oh, tigilan mo yan. Hindi para sa'yo yan. Anak ka ng Diyos. Okay po? Kaya ngayon, lesson natin last week, kasama mo ito. Sabi ng tanong ng psalmist, Where with all shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking him thereunto according to thy word. Nagtanong yung Psalm 119. Pa, paano ba isang young man? Napakahirap eh. But where with all shall a young man cleanse his way? By this book, pag, nag, pag natutunan mo, basahin ang Bible mo, matututunan mong bitawan ang hindi para sa iyo. Hello? Hello? So, maganda yung mga post against fornication, against adultery, be loyal. Amen? O, so, pagkatas yung last, pero kung rape, sabi niya, hindi na talk to my dalawang story short sa chapter 22, pero kung rape, tumawag ng tulong, ang papatayin yung lalaki. O, kasi, rape yun. Galit ng Diyos sa rapist. Okay po? Ha? So, so these are the, this is the summary of chapter 22 and some principles that we can learn. The principle of loving your neighbor as yourself. The principle of separation as a people of God. And the principle of God's purity against adultery and fornication. Nagsimula sa mga pananamit at sa ating panahon, sa ating teknolohika, magingat tayo, at pag ikaw ay nag-decision mag-asawa, mamahalin mo at baka masasama ka sa iyong asawa habang buhay. Kaya lagi ko ito sinasabi sa kasal, kaya kayong mga lalaki, pagandahin ninyo yung mga asawa ninyo. Huwag kayong kuripo. Kung gusto nyo ng magandang asawa, di kastasan ninyo. Pili ka ng maayos na masabot na mga hadjaks. Huwag na mga kung ano-ano lang. Hindi lang mo, pagandahin mo. Gusto mo na akong pera, o hindi tiis lang. Huwag naman yung iba naman. Huwag naman abuso yung mga babae. Ang sabi ni Pastor, sabi ni Pastor, wala nang pera, relax lang. Pakakaroon din. Okay? Tumayo po tayong lahat.